high. So I think I have um, around maybe half an hour of downtime and a quiet apartment. So I thought, why not make a short little video? Uh, I have been getting a few requests, uh, people asking what's in my pen case. So I brought it out. Uh, this pen case holds fountain pens. Um, I'm not a big fountain pen collector, I'm not uh, a complete newbie, but also I can't say I'm any kind of expert. But I do enjoy writing with, with fountain pens, um, I use them in my journals and uh, basically for any kind of writing in everyday life. Uh, I mean... What's, uh, what's more pleasurable than writing with a good writing instrument and uh, at the same time when it's pretty and comfortable. And yeah, if you use a fountain pen, I'm sure you, you are aware of all the pros and cons, of course. So uh, this is the, uh, the pen case um, I use every single day. I reach for it and it holds almost all of my fountain pens. I say almost because I also have, let me get it, uh, I have I think one or two I use with watercolor and it's with uh, the bulletproof black ink, the, the kind that's water resistant. Just let me grab it one second. So it's uh, in the pen roll with watercolor supplies. Yeah, there's two. Um, so this is the platinum uh, carbon ink pen. Uh, I don't have the carbon ink inside. Um, instead, oh, I should clean it. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, instead, I have a converter and it's almost empty, but the bulletproof ink is inside the converter. It's, um, it's just refillable and I Fill it up when necessary, use it with watercolors because when this dries and this provides a nice thin line, uh, it's good to go. You can watercolor over, over it so there's no black uh, pouring into the watercolor. Uh, this one is from Sailor. It's, the, it's this nib that's can you see it's slanted and you can uh, if you use it like this it's a very very thin line and if you use it more um, on an angle you can get awesome awesome line variety and uh, this one is not filled with uh, waterproof ink because if I want some lines to pour into the watercolor and when I touch it with water to just give out that black uh, pool of ink, this is what I go for. Not very often, but it's just there for variety. So these two uh, fountain pens I keep with my watercolor supplies because I don't usually write with them, I draw with them. And now that we got that covered, uh, yeah, this is the pen case. So uh, it's the Superior Labor um, zipped pen case. Uh, I think this is exclusive to uh, Wonder Pens, this kind of design. Uh, Nomada Store has something similar but they don't have the front pocket. I, I really wanted the front pocket because uh, that way I can store more pens and I love the way they peep through. So yeah, that was uh, that was my tip over point and I got it second hand for a very good price and I love shopping second hand in these stash sales. So that's also a big plus. I received it in, in wonderful condition, it's like new, like the, the first owner never used it. It's developing a patina and the leather um, 
if you're familiar with any uh, superior labor uh, leather products then you know that this is just extravagant and um, I don't know <laughs> it's hard to put into words I just love 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 the way they do what they do and uh, every single item I have is remarkable just just simple as that so Let's get into the pens because I digress easily, my mind wanders and now that I have this short time alone I want to say so many things and do so many things and uh, that's not possible so let's get into it. So, uh, okay this is in the inside, uh, my personal opinion is this is too much for this pen case but um, I like to keep um, it all in one place because right now I'm on vacation and I just crammed it all in there but it's a good way to show you what I have so let's start with the first fountain pen I ever got uh, it was a birthday present from my husband a couple of years ago it's a Caveco Sport uh, I have the bronze clip on it and this is I think a fine yeah a fine nib it's uh, very used and loved and you can see it already has some uh, ink uh, splotches there. Uh, I use it with a converter because I like using different color inks and I buy ink samples. Uh, that way I can test out the most colors and not have a cupboard full of bottled inks. I know I will... I get bored easily with colors so a whole bottle of one ink is just not reasonable for me at least so I get a sample I get two fillings out of a sample I get my taste and I buy another sample from um, fountain feather fountain feather uh, in Germany that's where I get my ink samples the most uh, and I highly recommend the shop there they have excellent excellent customer service uh, I you I bought I think I bought this fountain pen from there. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I think I did with the last samples. It's a Twisby diamond. And uh, yeah, you can get tons of different samples there. Uh, it's two euro a sample, I think, most usually. It depends on the ink, of course, but um, yeah. Awesome, awesome shop with a great variety. And that's where I get my ink fix. <laughs> and it's in the EU. EU. I'm in the EU, so that's plus. So this is the diamond, um, you can see here the full name, I like the color but I have to say, I don't know, I uh, the nib is extra fine, the same as my other Twisby, I'll show you the Twisby Eco, this one uh, feels scratchy and I'm not sure is it the ink? Uh, I have to clean it again. I, I haven't been using it much, so uh, I have to clean it again, uh, switch out maybe to a wetter ink, and uh, we'll see then. Uh, at the moment, I'm not completely happy with it. I can say that. I'm not because I think the nib is a tiny, tiny little bit scratchy, and that may be uh, my fault or. I don't know I'll clean it I'll tell you again uh, okay this is a really old pen and I'm not sure how old it's um, it's a pelican it says I'm not sure if it's gonna show it says pelican 30 rolled gold Germany that's all it says um, with a nice logo uh, and it has this hooded Nib, spoke. It, it's my dog. He's digging for some reason inside. Um, it's a gold. Uh, it's not a gold nib. It looks like gold plated or something. It's not gold. It doesn't have any markings on it. It's a piston filler, and uh, I don't know. It writes like a medium to broad. I'm not sure because this is my, this was my father's pen. Um, so uh, when he passed, um, I went through his stationery and other stuff that, you know how it goes. And 
I found this fountain pen and decided to keep it. Uh, it's, it's really wet. It writes very smoothly, but I think it's more on the medium broad side. Not something I usually use to write in my journals because I don't write big. But I use it to, sometimes I use it to write out uh, addresses on envelopes or greeting cards. Something nice, pretty and big. Um, yeah, there's not much uh, of a story, a story there. Uh, I'm not sure what even model this is or anything. I know it's a Pelican pen. It was my dad's. I'm keeping it as a sentimental piece and uh, use it with a nice, uh, maybe shimmery ink or shading ink because the broad nib really shows off that quality. So that's that. And that's always in my pen case. Uh, let's go back to Twisbees. So um, these three were tucked in there. And uh, Twisby, I have two more. One is Eco, one is Eco T. Okay, this one's Eco T. This one's older. It's an, what is it? An extra fine, a fine, I'm not sure. One is fine, one is extra fine. <laughs> and they are so smooth and uh, just, amazing writing experience that's why uh, after the white one um, I got a blue one the teal one or whatever and um, because I, uh, I like the writing experience so much uh, cleaning filling it up is easy it's again a piston filler uh, works without a glitch perfect smooth uh, feels good in the hand. It's not heavy. It's it's a pretty color and yeah, I think These pens are just for the price amazing amazing Perfect starter pen along with the Kaveco What are my experience so far? Uh, okay, so the last one jammed in here. It's a Laban pen and this one I won in a giveaway. And oh my god, I was so excited. I never, before that I had a Caveco or maybe a Twisby. And this was my first like high priced gold nib pen. And I was like, oh my god. And look at it it's really it's magnificent the the colors and all the finishes and I, I don't know it's just something else I hope it shows up it's a gold flex snip it's a uh, 14 carat fine fine yeah, uh, and uh, I use it with a converter again because it's cleaned, it's empty. Um, because I wanted to change color. Uh, because again, ink samples and I jammed the converter in the ink sample and I'm ready to go. So yeah, that's the uh, really expensive and extravagant Laban pen. I don't know if I would ever... I mean, it's, it's a high price and... Uh, I don't know if I would be able to afford it at the time where I got it and I'm really grateful for that to experience something extravagant as this. So that's the Laban and um, the latest uh, purchases from this year I think are the two sailors and I have to say I'm a sailor girl, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. They, they got me. Um, okay, so two price points. This one I got for about 50, 60 euro. This one is double, triple that. It depends when you, where you get it, how you get it. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll get to this one in a minute, but this, uh, it's... Dragon Palace, um, I think. Um, let's start from the details. The little emblem on the cap, 
the gold plated trim, the, the clip, I mean, look at the nib. It's so, so beautiful. And out of all my fountain pens, if I could keep one and have only one for the rest of my life, this would be it. This is just the smoothest rider ever. Never skips, never dries out. Uh, doesn't have trouble starting up. I sometimes I don't pick it up for a week because I write with different colors or something and never never skips never was dry never had any issues I dropped it once I almost had a heart attack and uh, yeah so uh, this is my if there ever was a favorite in my pen case this one is it and worth every penny and now I'm just in trouble because I keep buying other sailor pens and there are so many colors and so many. This one has little sparkles. Does it show? Yeah, I'm in love with all of them uh, with sparkles and with different car colors of the body and the cap and especially trans transparent ones with sparkles. I mean, come on. <laughs> It's like a fairy tale come true. Uh, this one also has sparkles, but it's more shimmery, like a, a subtle effect. And again, a beautiful, beautiful pen. The difference is, the main difference for me, except the design, of course, is the nib. This is not a gold nib. Uh, it does look gold in color. And it writes really well. It's uh, comparable to the Twisby, which I already said are smooth riders, but this one is just, it's such a small difference, but it's, it's there, it's noticeable. And uh, if I can compare it to something, and uh, I've heard other people compare it to that riding experience, uh, it's similar to riding with a mechanical pencil. Like on paper, you have that feedback. It's not uh scratchy it's not uh, something that annoys you but you have feedback it's not this one floats on paper it's broad it's wet in flow it floats you just glide over the paper this one you do glide but you feel it and that's something i enjoy when writing so this is it this is what i have and uh this will also um, be like that for a while now. Uh, I just, yesterday, I destashed, I think, three Kaweco fountain pens uh, because those were the colors I didn't feel anymore. They were the sports, um, the sport kind, but they were like a burgundy, a red, and um, I don't know, one more burgundy and a black and a black and those colors are not really something I enjoy currently and I don't want to have too many choices um, just sitting in some desk drawer and not being used and I sold them for a good price I think and also um, sold a couple of uh, other pen cases so this is it, this is the pen case I have, these are the pens that I have currently and uh, there are some plans for the future but we'll talk about that when the future comes because it's my birthday soon, I mean soon in three months but I already know what I want so <laughs> stationary addict problems, yeah. Um, okay so that's it, let's just pack them up where they belong. <sighs> Every pen in its little house. How did I, did I have them like this? I'm not sure, no. I think I had them in this pocket. Yeah, this is not ideal. I wouldn't recommend, yeah, there go here. I wouldn't recommend jamming so many pens 
I mean, you can do it. They won't. Uh, they don't hit each other or anything. You can. You can somehow see. You can jam this one in between and this one in between and this one is little. It can go by the edge. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? So they don't hit each other. Um, they don't collide. And the zipper goes around smoothly. And again, if you see this groove where the stitches are from the slots, I use the grooves to nestle in uh, these two guys. They go on top because they are the ones uh, I reach for the most at the moment. And also, let's be fair, uh, the nude leather, uh, this jade pastel green and the uh, pink, in my opinion, go amazing <laughs> together. So, yeah, it's for the aesthetics also. I mean, doesn't it look nice? Oh, I just realized I lied. These are not all my fount fountain pens. There's one more. Wait a second. I don't want to be a liar. Uh, this little guy. The Traveler's Company factory or Traveler's Company. Uh, the brass little guy. Uh, this is like such a cool design. And it's a bit heavy, not too, too heavy, but a bit heavy. It's a smooth rider. Uh, I would love for the nib to be a little, little bit uh, finer. This is fine. I never found, I don't think even extra fine exists in this type of pen. So I would have preferred an extra fine, but I don't know. It just it's, it doesn't matter. It's not really a problem. Uh, it's uh, I have a feeling it's a wet rider, so the fine is even more like almost a medium. I had a Caveco in medium, and it reminds me of the Caveco in medium. In medium, but I don't know. It's fine. It's just I would have been a little bit happier, but no biggie. Uh, yeah, I have it right here on my um, passport size, clipped here. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm not lying. That's all. <laughs> that's all. It's uh, it's too many, but that's all. And uh, lately, I'm really uh, loving the Caveco Sport also, but in different colors. Uh, the frosted ones, they're so much fun, those uh, bright pastel colors and uh, frosted see-through effects. I'm really enjoying that, that stuff. So my light is changing. I can see that uh, I'm kind of in the shadow here, so I hope you don't mind. So yeah, maybe for my birthday I do a splurge on a fun colored Caveco. There's the lavender one that was a special edition or something. And uh, there was the coral one and the frosted one. ones are all fun and beautiful. And I, I'll have a hard time deciding. And I also like the, that's a really old the skyline line like the macchiato looks really good it's so um subtle and a muted color yeah i'm kind of enjoying that 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 look recently and the cavecos in my experience are really reliable writers and they are like 18 19 euro a pen uh, okay, if you buy a converter, it's six more euros or five, and if you buy a clip, it's again five or six more euros, and it adds up. But uh, I don't know; it's not it's not like uh, something that will break your bank. And if you're starting out looking for a fountain pen, maybe it's your birthday or an occasion you can splurge and try out Kavik or Twisby. I really can can recommend those. I had all wonderful experiences except the diamond, but again, I have to look into that. That's maybe my problem. 
Uh, so yeah, we are at a uh, half year mark now. It's, what is it? June, Ju it's July. We passed halfway mark. And uh, I have been thinking of doing a flip through. And I'm not yet sure uh, would I want to do a flip through now-ish. Or maybe uh, at the end of the year. So uh, this year I have been using a uh, Jibun Techo for my weekly spreads. And I don't know, let me know in the comments below. Would you enjoy like a flip through uh, of my journal pages? Like a chatty thing um, somewhere around here, half year mark? Or should I wait till I fill it out till the end and then? I don't know, let me know what you think. Um, it's holding up pretty well. Uh, it is chunky, but this is not bad. I mean, when I use my Hobonichi for the entire year, the book exploded. It was like that. It was seriously like that. <laughs> I couldn't close it. Uh, but even though I do make some collaging here and there, I mean, I do, but it's not that bad. It's mostly washi and stickers and maybe some cutout papers. Letter press cards here and there where I have when I finish a stamp design. That's the whale uh, I did with D from Cafe Analog. It's available now. We did it for the summer. I think he's kind of cute. Did it for Betty initially from Instagram. She commissioned me to carve, carve her a uh, whale stamp. And I did this and then Dee said, Betty, is it okay if we make it and sell it because it's really cute. And that, that's the whale story. And what else? So we did the whale. Oh, this is not the same whale. This is another test carving. And we did the whale and we did the tiny hydrangea, as you can see here, uh, the tiny hydrangea rubber stamp. And I try to incorporate, um, we got our second dose here. Um, I try to incorporate uh, my carving endeavors and rubber stamp uh, launches in uh, weekly spreads there's another variation of a whale I carved so I did three variations and the one I showed you first somewhere this one this one is now made into a rubber stamp and is available at Cafe Analog so yeah uh, yeah uh, I should stop now because if I want to do a flip through, we'll chat about these kinds of things uh, in that video. So let me know in, in the comments below. Is it something you would like now-ish in the next month or should I wait till it's full and done for the year and we'll talk then. So I'm going to wrap this up because my uh, husband and son are going to be here probably soon. <laughs> and when that happens, there's no more... Um, Peace and quiet. Maybe you can hear the crickets. Maybe. I'm not sure if this, this is picking up. And just keep this real. Uh, this is the coffee table. I'm gonna take the phone now. <gasps> my phone is so hot. The sun has been hitting it. This is my coffee table. And this is what's behind it. Oh Lord, Lego blocks everywhere i mean it's the best toy ever and i uh this by the way are by the way are legos that are old i mean like more than 30 years old most of them this is my lego and my husband's lego and his brother's lego all um piled up in one huge pile in uh ikea box <laughs> and this is something we have here and he loves it he builds stuff and he adores it so from um, my little filming setup here we go to the Lego and 
try to show you if the sun is not too much. Hope you can hear the crickets now. This is Island Fest in Croatia and this is where we have our summer home, our family summer home. It's a tiny apartment but it has a terrace and the view is gorgeous. The beaches are awesome and it's the seaside, you know? Everything is better when you're at the seaside and the fresh air and everything. So yeah, uh, I will leave you with this view here where you can either see the other island, Lusheen. The wind is kind of blowing, so I'm not sure if you can hear me. I'll leave you with this view and talk to you soon. Bye!